This is Scott the Fix-It Guy. Our goal with our videos is to empower you to be able to do the repairs on your own and save a whole lot of money and also get that great feeling of having fixed it by yourself. Today we have a Maytag top loader coin operated washing machine that is not spinning. It does agitate, it does drain, but no spin. So I have it lean back against the wall. I have it on my, my toolkit to hold it up. I'm going to look underneath and check the condition of the belts. So the big pulley we see there is hooked to a belt that goes to the motor here in the in the front left hand corner. And there's also another longer belt we can't see on camera because it's behind this metal right here in the front of the camera. But it takes um, energy from the belt from the motor and transfers it to the pump so we're just going to check the condition of these belts i'm taking off the uh, belt on the pump first here's the part number for the double belt kit and it comes with a thicker belt and a skinnier belt the thicker one is the one that goes to the big pulley and the skinnier one goes to the <clears throat> pump which is the smaller pulley they both hook up to the motor so we just took off the one that goes to the big pulley, which is what makes it agitate and spin. We're taking off the skinnier one on the pump. I notice the one on the pump looks pretty good. Uh, the one that is making it agitate and spin, though, is really shiny and cracked. And they did complain of it being smelling kind of burnt. So it looks like what's going on is the big pulley is not spinning the way it should. The motor's trying to spin it, the belt's spinning, but the pulley is not spinning. And that could be that something's caught between the spin basket and the tub, or it could be that the main bearing is corroded and worn out. So I'm just trying to move that big pulley by hand and during the spin portion it takes a lot of force to move it and this is the agitate going to the left it seems fine but going to the right when it has to move the spin basket it's really difficult pretty rusty inside there too and it's an older unit so i think that the bearing is so corroded that it's causing uh, a lot of friction and that's that's preventing it and that's pretty big job to change that main bearing. And because the machine is so corroded, it may be best to just get a new machine at this point. I am going to check though to make sure there's nothing caught between the spin basket and the tub, which is pretty easy to do. Sometimes when you overfill it like a sock or article of clothing gets in there and creates so much friction that the spin basket can't move easily and then it just burns up the belts. So I'm just putting the belts back on. The way you do that is you put them on the motor first, the motor pulley right here where my hands are. Just put it around and then you loop it over to the big pulley and just turn the pulley and it'll feed right on. And then we'll do the one, the skinnier belt, which will go to the pump. So the, the one on the pulley has like two on the motor has like two pulleys hooked to it. I'm spinning out the two Phillips head screws here on the lower part of the front panel. I want to remove the front panel so I can kind of see what's going on during the spin spin phase. So I'll pull the panel out toward me to about 45 degrees. That's going to release the upper clip so I can get them out, get that out of the way. Yeah, it looks pretty corroded down there. A lot of rust spinning the pump pulley by hand and it does good it looks I'm just looking to see if there's something caught in there but it looks fine these are kind of cool these pumps are translucent you can see through them a little bit but I don't really see anything caught in there I do see a lot of rust though so I got this open here so I can use my thumb to control the timer, to advance the timer to the different cycles. I noticed that uh, it fills fine, it agitates fine, but when you go to spin, it does drain, but you start getting a burning smell and the 
big uh, silver flywheel down here, we'll, we'll show you in a second, doesn't move at all. And it should, it should gradually start to move and then it should move really fast. So either something's caught in there, which is really cool, easy to fix, or the bearing shot, which is pretty hard to fix. Here's that big flywheel. So if, the, if this is running, I don't advise putting your hand on this thing because if it starts to move all of a sudden, it could hurt your hand. But I'm noticing that it takes a lot of force to move it. I can see the water spinning around inside the pump though. That looks good. Just looking in that area where the bearing is. So I'm just pushing in on this little lid switch here so I can kind of watch from the top as it spins. And I'm noticing it is, it is draining, the water is coming out, but the spin basket never starts to move. There is a brake that is active when it's agitating and the brake is supposed to release when it goes to spin. If the brake is dragging, that can also cause this problem but due to all the rust I see, my, my guess is in the age, I think it's just that the bearing shot. Just checking those belts again. We've got a better view now of what the belts look like. So the big belt just slips off easily. The little belt spins really good. That's for the pump. If I grab that pulley though, it, when I go to the spin direction, it's it takes a lot of force. I should be able to spin that with one hand. You can see that flywheel moving, but it is just doesn't want to move easily. There are some good videos out there that show you how to uh, adjust the brake system. So that is something to look at. It's a possibility. What I'll do next is remove this top piece and then I'll peer in there to see if there's something caught between the, the black tub and the spin basket. Just locking up the control because I won't be using the timer anymore. I'm using a standard head screwdriver to spin off this screw and this is what holds the top portion of the tub onto the lower portion. It has to be a watertight connection. So this clamp holds it really tight. So spinning that off. And then there's two screws that are holding on the top panel. And I'll take those out and then I can hinge up the top panel so I can remove that upper part of the tub. All right, so there's one of the screws. Got that out. <clears> These <throat> usually in there pretty, pretty strong, pretty hard because they're they have been sitting for years and years, pretty corroded. So I'll zip this one out. Okay, now I can hinge up the top. There we go. I can lift up on this upper aspect of the tub. I can wiggle and lift and I can pull that thing out of there so I can get a get a look what's going on. So again, this stuff's been sitting for years, so it may take a little bit of force to, to make it come loose. more corrosion here in the upper aspect of this uh, supposed to be watertight and there's a big corroded hole in it. So 
So there's the spin basket. I'm just staring down in between the spin basket and the tub. It's a small little gap going all the, way, all the way around the perimeter, and I don't see any clothing caught in there. But if you did see something, you could fish it out with a straightened um, coat hanger with a hook on it. Pretty easy to do. And that's a really good thing to find because then you can put it back together and it'll be fine. It'll be fine. But in this case, I think this machine is a goner just because it's so rusted. So I just put the um, top piece back on, tightened up the seal. Put the top panel back. Get the screws in. I'm going to put in the upper clips here, hinge it back to 90 degrees to, to vertical, and then I'll add the two Phillips head screws that hold it in. Thanks so much for watching our video. We really appreciate you coming to our channel. Please subscribe when you get a chance by pressing the subscribe button and also the bell button so we can send you notifications of any new videos that come along. And we have a new thing here called the applaud button. If you really liked the video, if it was helpful to you, if you can click that, we really appreciate that. It shows your um, interest in our, in our channel and your support, and I can't thank you enough. Feel free to contact me at the email listed below, which is scottthefixitguy at yahoo.com with any of your questions. And also, if you need to have a uh, FaceTime meeting with me or a Zoom meeting, you can click on one of the links below in the description and we can set up a 15 minute or 30 minute video conference where we can work on your appliance problem. So thanks again for all your support and for watching the video.